In this video, I'm going to chat about this seemingly complicated profile feature control frame we have going on here, explain what it means, and I'll discuss how to calculate some minimum gaps. So I specifically remember this being on the uh, senior certification exam. Plus, it's just good to know, you know, composite profile and composite position really aren't as complicated as they seem. So let's jump right in here. I've got a little rectangle shape with two squares. Everything's defined with basic dimensions. And I only have the dimensions on here necessary to explain what I'm doing. So this is incomplete. So what exactly are we, what, what exactly is going on here? We've got a composite profile with another profile on top of it that applies individually. So without this individually, we'll ignore that for just a second. The composite profile, we've got 80 thousandths to A, B, and C. That is going to constrain translational and rotational degrees of freedom. What that means is that you're measuring from the datums to locate those features. That's translation. Rotation just refers to orientation. Is it perpendicular or parallel to something? Or, you know, angle with a, a basic dimension. So without anything else, right, this 80 thousandths is just a regular profile you would check in the normal way you would check any other profile. There's a 80 thousandths tolerance zone total around each of these little squares that you check to the datum reference frame. Now, this 40 thousandths to A is different. If there's only one uh, geometric characteristic symbol instead of two, it's composite. That means is the first one, like I said, translation and rotation, any subsequent feature control and segments control rotational degrees of freedom if possible and the features within the pattern according to the basic dimension that links the pattern together. Okay, so we're not measuring from datums, but the features are locked into each other in the pattern and that's very, very important. So we've got 40 thousandths to A. That's essentially just saying each of these squares is perpendicular to A, and they're locked together with this one inch basic dimension. So that limits how close they can be to each other. This 80 thousandths means they can get closer together than this 40 thousandths. Now, if it's applied to a single feature, that doesn't matter. But when you've got multiple features in a pattern, that does matter, and it's going to affect the gap between these. Now, this one on top, right, this is probably throw you for a loop. If we put it down here, right, and let me just erase this real quick. If instead of being up here, right, imagine this is erased, we had it down here, right, it would control the form, the size, right, because it's the limiting number here, and the distance they could be apart. So now they're locked uh, 20,000, so they can't be as close. That might be desirable, but it also makes the part more difficult to produce, right? They can't get closer together because there's still this one inch basic dimension applies and we've tightened up the tolerance zone. Now, if we don't do this, right? And we go back to how I had it at first, 20 thousandths individually releases this basic dimension requirement. That's all individually means. It means we're just checking each of these squares to make sure the form, and this is also controlling the size, is within 20 thousandths. So it's going to affect the MMC and the LMC of each of these. That's going to tell you what part might fit within one of those holes. So in this case, because they're one inch squares, our LMC is 1.02, the largest a square can be, and the MMC is 0.98, the smallest the square can be, right? Not one of these numbers, not the 80 or not the 40 thousandths, because those are controlling location and orientation. Now, if we wanted to know some gaps, right, let's take a look. At this gap, what would be the minimum gap uh, between the two squares? So it's not the 80 thousandths because this 40 thousandths further refines it. Recall this uh, second segment here controls rotational degrees of freedom and still has control with the basic dimensions. So 
We've got a tolerance zone of 40 thousandths controlled to the basic dimension. Basic dimension of one inch, 20 thousandths here, 20 thousandths here, 40. We take the one inch minus that 40, and that's going to give us 0.96. That is the minimum gap, not this larger number, right? They're controlled together within this smaller number. Now, if we didn't use this individually, right, and we put it down here like we did before, right, that minimum gap would be uh, larger, right? The, the squares couldn't get closer together. So if this 20 thousandths applied down here and it was controlling the basic dimension within the pattern, our minimum gap would be 0.98, not 0.96, which could make the part more difficult to produce. Now, if we wanted to know right, this minimum gap, now we need to take this into account because we're looking for a minimum wall thickness. So this is 20 thousandths to A and B, which means that there's 10 thousandths inside of the part in which the actual surface might encroach on. So we have to take that into account. And in this case, we're taking the larger number from the composite tolerance into account, this 80 thousandths, because we're measuring from datum C. Right before we were just looking at the pattern to itself. Now we're seeing how far this uh, feature can be from datum C. In that case, it's this 80 thousandths that we have to take into account. So if we drew the tolerance zone here, now we're looking at 80 thousandths centered on the true position. So we take this 40 thousandths on one side we take this 10 thousandths that's going in this direction, so that's 50 thousandths, minus our one inch basic dimension, and that gives us 0.95. That's our minimum gap. So it can be a little tricky to figure this stuff out, but just think about where you're measuring from, right? In this case, we're measuring from C. In this case, if we're looking for features within the pattern, right, we're not measuring from a datum, we're just looking at the pattern to itself and any subsequent uh, segments here are going to control rotation and the basic dimensions within the pattern. A lot of this carries over to composite position as well, uh, but composite profile is a, a very powerful tolerance. And as I mentioned, this 20 thousandths individually just controls the form and the size of those two holes. So say if it didn't matter so much where they were, but they needed to be oriented to A, Right now you're controlling the size and form to one thing, you're controlling the orientation and the features within the pattern to another, and then the location of the pattern to yet another thing. So even though they can be kind of off uh, in location, they're going to be the right size, they're going to be oriented correctly, and they're going to be reasonably close together. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to cover this. I know this spooks a lot of people seeing these complicated feature control frames, but like I've mentioned before, the more complicated the feature control frame, the more the designer probably thought about the design and found uh, tolerance, right? This typically needs more tolerance, and it definitely means more tolerance than if you just did 20 thousandths to A, B, and C, right? This gives you more tolerance than that. So if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below.